Hi, what's this video about? Well, it's me popping out for a night out in the woods. So hear what, see what goes on. And also I'll be having a bit of a tent talk about health tips, uh, some event stuff and all kinds of other stuff. So keep watching, uh, watch to the end because there's plenty to, to uh, take in. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, this is one of two videos actually I'm doing. So yeah, okay, thanks for watching and um, catch you soon. everybody <laughs> oh it's been a while been a week since i've been out climbing the walls desperate to get out so today i'm popping out for a night out camping reason i'm doing this is uh i've, got, I've seen a place I fancy camping and also i want to use the tarp and the tent I just want to try something out, which I will explain. But yeah, keep watching us, see how we get on. So what I'm doing today is I'm going up a trail which I've done many times. It's called Watery Lane. But well, I haven't done it loaded, I don't think. I don't know or not. So I've got a full kit on. Uh, three litres of water. And I've got too much stuff, but I've just got it all. I've got winter stuff. I haven't got a winter sleep bag, I've just got a normal one, three season one. I don't think it's going to be very cold tonight. It's not very cold at the moment, about 10 degrees. And uh, food for tonight and tomorrow, which are just five pot meals, nice and simple. And uh, bed in, and that's it. Tent and a tarp, of course, as I mentioned. So the bike's a little bit heavier than the tarp's quite heavy. It's not, an, it's not a cheap one, it's not a lightweight one, it's just a uh, DDD tarp and uh, yeah so I'm gonna say going up watery lane so this will be a bit of a slog it's pretty steep and rough I think I, was, I, think I rode it in my last video maybe and uh, it's quite a long old climb up a very wet and rude, rocky, rocky climb so I probably won't film it this time just because I'll need to concentrate with all the extra weight but uh, I will see you at the top if I don't get the camera out <laughs> Quite as wet as last time. Yeah, it's called Watery Lane for a reason. <laughs> it's water running down it almost all year round. Yeah, this one's going to be a bottom gear. Just take my time job. Just try not to get too hot and sweaty. Oops, obstacle. This could be tricky. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, box. I don't like stopping. Gotta get going again now. Who put that there? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, it's full. Oh, the trees come down. Oh, well, I stopped now. Sod it. Gotta get going again now. Actually, there's a few trees down by the look of it. Right, let's get to the top. Just before I continue, I have to say that uh, my book of excuses, I brought it with me this time, just in case, but it doesn't actually cover age. Apparently it's a factor, not an excuse. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, that's the easy bit out of the way. The hard bit's coming. When I say hard, it's more a case of uh, stalling because of some steps. You need a certain amount of momentum, which might be tricky on a 30 kilo bike, but we'll see. More trees out. It's a tricky bit coming. Uh, 
Go on, Grant. Go on. So, I mean, momentum. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Yahoo! Chop! The joys of living at the bottom of a hill, the plus is you get a brilliant ride home when you're tired, but the downside is you've got to climb to start with. Straight out the gate, two miles, 800 feet. Well, it's 827 so far, and we're not at the top yet. That's in two miles. <laughs> It's taking me 32 minutes. And it's a bit more to go yet. And a bit more after that up there. And then up again. <laughs> it's real nice. I'm, up, I'm going up to my usual spot, obviously, where I always start my rides and I always finish them on Painswick Beacon. So I'm nearly there. This is just another way up. But uh, you got to get up, so you might as well go up this way and uh, see what you can see. So that's a stress ball on the tree. <laughs> Someone's been taking, taking out their frustrations. Hello, hello. All right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Soon be there. Hopefully there's no golf balls whizzing past. Shouldn't be all right this time of day. the dog walkers. So I'll go up to the top and then make my way over to Cranham Woods. Got to get the climb in, get to the top. There is the top up there. A bit more to go yet. Fresh wind up here. Lovely, though. beautiful. Even though it's a bit murky today, it's still a lovely place to come. Anyway, I won't bore you with it. You've seen it a million times. on the battle once again. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Two and a half thousand year old war. Be a little bit careful because I've got a lot of grain clearance. <laughs> I've never ridden here before, so not down here anyway. Let's see where it goes, I know where it ends up. But uh, let's just see what it's like to ride. 
I think I know where this comes out. Bit of a rain gully. Some steps. <laughs> That's just cool. Oh, when I went to disaster. Oh my god. <laughs> Bit off camber. Oh, we're here. Uh huh. I see. <laughs> Not quite where I thought. I thought we were coming down there. So we've got a steep climb now. That's a bit silly. Short, sharp, steep climb coming up. Now we never used to be able to ride this. Years ago when we used to, when we first started mountain biking in the club, or with some mates, we used to come around here and try to get up here. And very often didn't. It's quite steep. Let's see how we go. Fully loaded. Playground. So that's the basic tent up. Wide end, head end, narrow end, foot end. It's a really nice tent. This is a two man tent. It's a big Agnes Copper Spur 2. Uh, two man, but it's perfect for one because you've got plenty of room inside to move around. You can put your mat in there and you've still got room. Come the summer, you can leave it like this, not put the top on. But tonight it could well rain, I don't know. Um, the plan is to put the tarp up, but I'm not sure I'm going to have. Well, I'll see. I'm going to play around with where I'm going to put it. Because what I want to do is, is hide ourselves from, from up here, because up here, I'll show you. Just up here is a path. Oh, it's a bit further away than I thought. It's, it runs along. Up there is a path that the dog walkers use. The other pegs in. Got one there. See what it starts from the track. 
So just got the tarp up. It's not ideal. I've got the tent up. I've really got the tarp really just a bit of a barrier between me and the path. So when you look down here you can't see and I can hide the bike under it. It's nothing to do with the weather. But um, you can sort of I can hide behind this now. I don't think you can get to see it. It's just green. Obviously it looks greener with this phone, but it's phone making it look dark a lighter, but that's alright. I'll just pull that out a bit. Get the creases out. That's better. It just means I've got a bit of a barrier between me and the path. And then I've got my tent in here. I'll put the bike under there. Perfect. I've just strung this up in two trees. Quite simple. Pegged out the bottom. And I've got a bit, a bit of a covered area under there. Should I need it? So I can stash my bike there and should be fine. Right. Let's get my mat out. I'm going to get some food on the go. the water in so you just leave that now for 15 minutes i'll probably live for a bit longer actually about 20 minutes and then um, ready to eat so i was going to um i'm not sure you can see me it's going to be a very exciting video this because <laughs> it's a dark but um anyway in the tent have my tea Nice bit of bolognese, and very nice it was. <clears throat> so it's, what is it now, about, what is the time? The time is, God, it's only quarter to six. <laughs> so, um, pitch black in the woods. I'm going to have to put this on charge, which I'll do when I chat to you. Um, so yeah, I was going to talk about the topic of food. Um, you may, if you follow me on my Facebook channel or whatever, you may have heard that I had issues with uh, coming off steroids, trying to sort myself out to come off them. And one of the things I've noticed or I found out is um, the medication affects my um, how my body reacts to food. So. Um, Sorry about that. That's better. New battery. So, um, as I was saying, the steroids I'm on means I have to take a medication called uh, omeprozole to protect, protect my stomach. And before I got into this, I used to suffer from gastric reflux, which is a Western problem, a Western diet problem. It comes from years of eating too much, um, eating too large quantities, smoking drinking and basically eating lots of crap and um, I'm now paying the price so it's the symptoms I I get a when I wake up in the morning I've got a cough I've got to clear my throat it's like Qatar in my throat like um, flame in the top of my throat 
and during the day I'll cough and I burp a lot, uh, seem to swallow a lot of air, things like that. So in America, this is like 25% of the country's got this problem. It's very common with Western diets. And um, so I started looking into it and I've discovered that the tablets that I take make this worse. Uh, but what they do, because it's a, it's a, it protects your stomach from the steroid, but it also lowers the acid in your stomach. Now you need a certain amount of acid to digest your food. Um, normally gastric reflux means you're getting um, what they call heartburn, where you get acid coming up your throat. Well this is more a case of I had gastric reflux, now I've got low levels of acid in my stomach and you need, it's quite complicated this, I'll, I'll put a link to a video which will show it a bit, I'll describe it a bit better, but I'll just go through the basics. When you've got a certain amount of acid in your stomach, the valve at the top of your stomach that stops things coming back up your, your throat shuts. But when you haven't got enough acid, that, that valve stays open. So when you lie down, food can come back up and it feels like you're being sick. Um, you get a taste in your mouth. Now I've had that for years and I always thought it was too much acid. So I've learned recently that it's not enough. And of course these tablets are making it even worse. So, um, and then, obviously, when you're doing, when you're feeling down in the dumps and you've got a bit of time on your hands and you're taking medication and you want to get yourself better, you start to look into all kinds of things. So I've been looking into, into proper healthy diets, which I thought I had. I thought I had it pretty wrapped, pretty sorted. Um, but I will still eating a bit of sugar, the odd beer, the odd beer now and again, eating a lot of bread, uh, eating a lot of supermarket bread, and. Um, like I'm a cake and my coffee and all the rest of it. And I've been doing fine, I thought. But then I've now realized that a lot of these things have been causing all of my problems. Now over the last week, two weeks, I have cut out sugar completely, 100%. I don't know any in anything. Um, I have ditched supermarket bread because it's full of all kinds of rubbish. Um, I have ditched cakes, I've ditched caffeine, coffee, completely. Uh, I have a little bit because I drink tea. Tea seems to be okay because it's got quite caffeine in it, but a much smaller amount. Um, and what else? Um, yeah, supermarket bread. Basically anything in a packet I don't, I don't have. Um, I know you're going to say, well, you've just had a fire pot meal, but a fire pot meal contains purely natural products doesn't have anything in it, there's no chemicals, there's nothing. So, um, which is part of the reason I, I have them. Now since I've done this, since I've cut sugar out of my diet, since I've eaten less, because I have smaller meals now, because a large meal stretches your stomach and does lots of things to your system um, and overloads it, which you shouldn't do. So I have smaller meals now and all the symptoms I had, the cough and all the rest, have gone. I've noticed today it's gone. So it's obviously doing something. So what I would suggest to anyone as you get older, I mean, ideally you want to do this when you're young, and a lot of people are now, a lot of kids don't drink anymore, a lot of kids eat healthier, um, and if you do that, you'll basically stop this problem happening in the first place. But if you have got gastric reflux, I would recommend getting what they call a pH test in your stomach, which is, isn't the best thing, I've got to have it done, which means having a, a tube down your nose, down your throat, to your stomach, to test the, uh, the pH level of, it, of your stomach. Now, it shouldn't be too high. If it is too high, it means you've not got enough acid, and there are things you can take to bring that back up, but um, it's worth looking at. Anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll put a link to a, vi a video. It's much easier to, to um, decipher and understand, and you can look at it at your leisure. So, yeah. That was it really. I know it's a bit <laughs> a bit technical, but um, a bit in depth. But anyway, it's just what I've been having to put up with over the last week or so, which seems to be working. I've got a doctor's appointment on Thursday about my steroid levels and coming off this polymyalgia, which I think I've got conquered. Um, but I've got to slowly, I, I, took, I came down a milligram last week and I didn't feel too clever, so I went back up that milligram and just waited a bit longer. So um, it's a slow process. That and ageing. <laughs> it's, it's not one thing, it's another. But 
yeah all good all good in the hood anyway on another topic I was supposed to be if you um, remember back in Jan, uh, oh, almost a year ago I decided to do some events I was going to do the Dorset Dirt Dash this is after I think it was around March last year when I just got off I was feeling a bit sorry for myself and I decided to give myself some challenges and one of them was Dorset Dirt Dash and the other one was Fat Viking Fat Viking was uh, oh sorry Dirt, Dorset Dirt Dash was last 2023 May I think it was May or April 2023 or was it June anyway I did it um, all fine and then the next mission was to get ready for Fat Viking which has just happened last weekend January 24th in Norway and I really really wanted to do it started getting all of my kit together did some videos preparing for it all the kit that you need uh, and then I just wasn't feeling good I haven't felt good for quite some time this cough and all the rest of it and my food which I think I've now conquered um, just messed me up so much that I couldn't I just couldn't cope with it I wasn't I'm not strong enough so ditched it um, and it so happens it's just happened it so happens that it was one of the warmest this year and the conditions weren't too clever it was very windy and very uh, warm so the snow was quite soft and hard going so a lot of people pushed a friend of mine who was I was supposed to be doing with pushed 30k I think out of 50 which isn't my idea of uh, a bike event but uh, anyway so that sort of didn't happen I am looking to do it next year but I'm also looking into because that's a competitive event you're sort of set you have a certain time you have to get around 150k or it's a 50k 100k or 150 and you're you have a certain amount of time to do it this cut off period so it's it pushes you a bit and I don't really like going against the clock so uh, we're looking, me and this chap Dave, we're looking at possibly doing just a trip somewhere in snowy conditions at our own pace just to explore places somewhere like Finland or something like that. So we're looking into that maybe because I really do love riding in the snow. I've done it before. I've ridden in Gustard in Switzerland and I've ridden, uh, actually no it's just Gustard that's it. Um, and that was that was really really good. So yeah that's the um, that's the story so far about me and Fat Viking. Um, I also, I must just mention that when I did say I was going to do Dorset Dirt Dash and Fat Viking, I put a charity uh, GoFundMe page up, not GoFundMe, anyway, a charity page up to raise money for um, mo um, MND, that was it, Doddy's charity, MND. I did raise some money. I will look up exactly what we, we put in the pot, but um, yeah, we did raise some money. Thank you. Um, obviously, I didn't complete the the uh, second challenge, but that's uh, the running was still there, and um, it's gone in the pot. And I'm going to support the same charity again this year um, where, for our event that we're putting on. I'm putting an event on in, in uh, June called the Surly 100, and it's a two-day bike packing event. And 10% of the entry fee of that will go towards MND, um, the MND charity. Terrible disease. Um, I just gotta, just gotta raise money for it. So, um, yeah, other things. Um, you may have seen my post I just did about uh, all this. I just rejig my garage at home or my workshop, and um, I put some pictures up on Facebook and Instagram of. I, I read. I did. All, I went through the workshop and tidied it up because it's getting a bit of a mess. And the stuff that I found and the memories I found were amazing. Because I've done, as you do, as you, as you, you know, being older, I've done a lot of things, been involved with a lot of things, and um, stuff like uh, I had a dirt, uh, bike park in Cranham called Kiss Dirt City, and um, there was stuff from that I found. Um, a Bigfoot mountain bike club which we started back in 94 there's stuff there I found this week all kinds of things so it's, and it all sort of started in that garage or in that um, workshop yeah I've designed Bigfoot bikes back in the day back in the 90s all kinds of stuff it's funny how you, these things sort of bring all this back yeah, I've been reminiscing a bit today good to see lots of people I've met along the way who some no longer with us 
and um, others gone on to do great things like Martin Hasley who's now part of Bike Park Wales he used to ride at our track it's amazing where people go and as they grow up and things they get into yeah brilliant so anyway that'll do for the moment and um, I shall probably chat to you a bit later Fox No idea what the time is. <laughs> Two foxes now. So it's just, um, what's the time? It's five past four, so I'm probably gonna get up. I've been asleep for ages. And uh, can't sleep with that racket. Park it. That's it. All parked away. Leave no trace. I thought there. Bar a bit of flat around, you wouldn't know we'd been here. Right, trying to go and see if I can find this fox. It's barking away all around me now. Must be doing his rounds. Right, all packed up. Uh, what time is, I don't know. Half past four. Right, I'm going to hit the road. Right, time to hit the road, Jack. It's 4.53, so uh, let's see what we can see at this time of day. Nothing, I've said this before, when you're out really early in the morning it's just so nice. Nothing around, a few animal noises. It's uh, just peaceful, just you, your bike, and wherever you are. So I'm in the thick of the woods. I know where I am, I know the trail, so but, uh, I'm just going to make my way up. It's not a far ride at all, I'm only going to do close to no distance at all. 10 miles max, I think. But uh, just a night out. Good. It's a shame the camera doesn't pick it up because it's really lovely at the moment. You just see boats of Gloucester over the brow of the hill. I don't think the GoPro is going to pick it up. But it's, uh, what is it in there? 523. I'm just heading up to Pengswick Beacon. Just because I want to get to the top for the view of Gloucester before I go down to home. <clears throat> and it's just uh, times like this when you're on your Todd and it's quiet, gives you time to think. And uh, when you're uh, retired, obviously the first thing you notice is no work, no people around you, not a lot to do. So you can slip into a, oh, I'm just going to sit in front of the telly and just relax and do not a lot. Which probably, if you want to shorten your life, that's the thing to do. Yes, it's nice and easy and sit back, and but your brain will shrink, go to sleep. Your body will just give up on stuff. So doing things like this, riding a bike, walking, anything like that, just to get you out. It's wonderful. Uh, I love, I mean, this is just so, I can't explain how I'm feeling now. It just makes you feel so cheerful and happy and free. I could be anywhere on planet Earth right now. Wouldn't make any difference whether I was in, I don't know, Barbados or Spain or Australia or 
wherever. Same experience, just me, peaceful, riding along. I know the temperature's different, but you dress accordingly and you don't notice any difference. But uh, yeah, it could be anywhere. It's just lovely. But, uh, <laughs> getting all melancholy. But uh, yeah, that's why I do it. That's why a lot of people cycle and run. And they run on their own, same sort of thing. Get out early in the morning, go for a run or a walk. Even better if you've got a dog. Anyway, I've had this, I've talked about this last time, but it's, I just thought I'd, uh, it's what I was going through my mind as I was cycling along. Right, I've got a bit of a steep bit now, so I'm trying to put camera down in a minute. Look at that. See that? Oh, I hope you can see that. Well, like civilization. <laughs> Such a lovely place this. to meet me and I've just made it back I can't believe this I don't um I won't go into details but I've got a stick stuck in my back tire it's gone right in so I have to stop a couple of times on the way back I'll show you at some point but um, it's in there somewhere so the tires pretty much flat I don't know what it was because we've got every go every revolution is going don't because there's a, a stick that's gone right in to the tyre. I'm going to be changing these tyres anyway soon, but I'll explain about that in a bit. Right, I'm going to go have some breakfast and um, <laughs> I will chat to you later. <laughs>